this is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. to any of the locals and you'll be surprised to learn that necessity is not the mother of invention, it's Scotland. But they've got a fairly good argument if you look at the achievements of people like James Watt and his steam engine, John McAdam, the inventor of Fitchman Roads, Alexander Graham Bell, the man who started the telephones ringing, and John Logie Baird, the man to thank for television. But are the Scots about to add another name to that illustrious list? Meet Sandy Kidd, a 53-year-old former oil industry engineer turned inventor. Move over cold fusion. After 30 years thought and the last four years tinkering, Sandy Kidd claims to have invented and made with his own hands the dream machine. An anti-gravitation device whose basic principle could be developed to get a spacecraft to Mars in less than two days. Come to his laboratory and see what all the fuss is about. The family car's been banished because the garage has become home for his inventions that in some way all seek to harness and convert the energy of gyroscopes. Gyroscopes appear magical and that's the attraction of them as children's toys. But the gyroscopic forces that allow them to defy gravity for as long as they keep spinning can be extremely powerful forces indeed. And when I was in the Royal Air Force, I had the occasion to remove a, a gyroscope after a flight of Vulcan bomber. I removed the gyroscope from its uh, housing, or from its mounting, and backed down the ladder with it. I turned around sharply, not by a great amount either, and the thing threw me on my back. Now, it's quite a little device, three or four inches in diameter, but the power on it was quite frightening. And this is one of the machines that Sandy's built. Basically, a couple of flywheels linked to a model aircraft engine for this display purpose. Now, if this were to rotate around that axis, then suddenly centrifugal forces would try and move those wheels out. But if you start rotating those flywheels at the same time as all that's happening, then suddenly gyroscopic forces come into play that try and force those wheels inwards. Now, what Sandy claims is that the energy required to move those wheels inwards is less than the energy required to move them out. The difference in energy, the net energy, he claims to have harnessed into vertical motion. But such a claim contradicts some very fundamental laws of physics. The classical one is Newton's third law of motion, which is that every action requires an equal and opposite reaction. And Sandy is doing a bit of magic to try and get an action without a reaction. So, does he? I don't know. Um, if I had to bet, I'd say he hadn't. But I believe that every law of physics ought to be given a very good kick out the backside every so often. And I'm sure that Sir Isaac Newton's ghost would be delighted with seeing some good experiments done about this. So, does it do what Sandy claims? For this demonstration, he's rigged a set of pulleys, string, and a bucket full of nails and metal to exactly balance the weight of his device. Once in equilibrium, he starts the model aircraft motor to keep the gyros spinning. If those spinning forces get converted into linear momentum, he believes his device will rise against gravity. Professor Salter at Edinburgh University would like to run tests on inventions like this to answer once and for all whether nearly every physicist since Newton has got a basic piece of physics quite wrong or whether there's a riddle in what Sandy Kidd's doing that hasn't been explained yet. So far, he hasn't got all the gyro inventors to agree to the very testing that could silence the sceptics. 
Leonard Holloran needs no convincing. As organiser of the Advanced Energy Research Institute, he's a science entrepreneur. Along with cold fusion and other energy alternatives, he believes in Sandy's invention. If you have a way of, first of all, producing energy into rotary motion, and then you can take the rotary motion and produce it into linear thrust, at a constant rate of acceleration, even at 1G, it means you can very quickly, over a period of time, build up very high velocities, and you now have the tool with which man can reach to the stars, quite literally. In space, rather than a model aircraft engine, nuclear power is envisaged to keep the gyros spinning. While the strongest conventional scientific thought is that this rising effect is somehow achieved by harnessing non-linear friction set up by the random vibrations, the jury is still out.